We're here with Steve Stevens at his Net Zero Energy home, actually Net Positive, uh, in uh, in South Golden. And as you can see, he owns a Tesla, which he charges for free from the sun, and he does a lot of else from a lot else from the sun too. So, Steve, show us your house. Okay. First, what? let's come to the sun ovens. Okay. Jim, these are two sun ovens. I've got a vegetable casserole in one, and a pork roast in the other. And right now they're at 225 degrees each. It's like having a, a uh, slow cooking pot. Yeah, yes, if I get closer, we can see the actual pot under the glass. Yeah. This is my latest addition, still finishing last details. What you have here is an outer north side or front airlock. This airlock has then an inner airlock and then the old front door. Okay, I want to summarize the house briefly. This is the summary for 12 months of energy use every day. Green is I produced more than I used. Red is I used more than I produced. This is a guide to our tour. This is the north side of the house. This is the south side of the house. And we're right now sitting in this new airlock here. Mm -hmm. And as we look out this window, you'll see the garden space, right, and you'll see the grapevines, and you'll see fruit trees. the fruit trees, apple, plum, pear, apricot, peach, 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 and then, so that's the garden space. We're going to come in and go through some of the rooms, but I'm talking about the energy that I catch in the house. All the plants for food are catching energy. The skylight above here is catching energy. The um, There's going to be sun tunnels, seven of them in the house, mm -hmm. that are catching energy. The photovoltaics are catching energy. We just looked down this side space that has two eight-foot-long skylights that have the avocados in, and then there's rooms that were added back here so you'll see yeah. wall thickening now in this room just to summarize this window is four ply it is r12 this is a sample cut glass mylar mylar glass and is that alpen this is alpen it's r12 because i buried the coldest parts into the wall oh yeah so I that. the edge effect is gone Right. I have center of glass the way yeah. I've built yeah. it. Right. It's all center yeah. of glass. The edges are a place where a lot of the coolness from outside is transmitted. Yeah. Now, the walls, yeah. I've uh, done post and beam, and in between, I've put poly iso mm -hmm. three inches, and then on the outside and the inside, I've put another. So I have R50 walls in this airlock, R50 walls between. Wow. The three layers. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, so the floors and, and the walls also have uh, redwood, which I've routed to be ship lapped. Oh, yeah. So that's right. what you see here. Right, right. And that's what you also see down here. I've oiled the floor there. Yeah. Now, when you look over at the entry floor, it's this, which is playground recycled tire. I really? Have two layers. Really? And that's two inches. That's why it was soft when you came in. Yeah. Two inches of that. Underneath the floor here, I've got one inch of this. Wow. And then underneath the framing, I've got the polyiso down two feet so that ground cold doesn't get to the bottom of the concrete of the old internal walkway. Right, right. Because this was a concrete walkway to your front door. a concrete walkway and a concrete walkway. Yeah. So, so I've, I've done a lot of things here, and all of the redwood is coal, C-U-L-L. -L. It was what nobody wanted for their right. decks and their patios because it was crooked or bad. So I sand and I routed it, and I planed it to be nice, and the people won't do that. So I paid... <laughs> 10 cents on the dollar. Right. Everybody should cents. look for cull lumber when they're shopping if they yeah. if they and don't then, need it absolutely then, straight. Uh, the, these windows actually 
are taken out of another house because there's a minor little deflection in the corner, right. visual deflection. They were free. These are fifteen hundred dollar four ply. They were free windows. They were free. How did you get them free? Because they came out of a house because the house owner was picky about little details, and mm. instead of having them crushed, and I didn't get the frame. I just got the With the glass. The yeah. glass. So they were free. One, two, three. Wow. These doors. Yeah, those are were beautiful. Three thousand dollar yeah. doors insulated, uh, and I paid five hundred for three thousand dollar doors each of them. Yeah, but the main thing is that it's not just that you're saving money, but it's sustainable I, because you're not making industry build new ones for right. you. Right, that's right. Yeah. Okay, now, so anyway, I'm just gonna more summary. So we talked about catching energy. Right. Now we're gonna talk about keeping it. I super insulated the attic, so there's the house, and. The garage also and I filled up the attic all the way to the rafter by taking off the ridge and filling cellulose all the way up wow not just 16 inches but no, just no, no. you completely all filled the, way up. the attic all the way up oh wow except where I need to get up in one area to service a system that's up there and then on the walls again we're right here okay so the red we're talking the red, about the I red these walls yeah. And inside and outside there, and the wall between the kitchen, living room, and the garage there. So I've been, and then I've built all these enclosures that further buffer. So I'm insulating and buffering. I'm layering and layering. Mm. In Colorado, we layer our clothes. So this shows the layering of the house. Yeah. Now, the south is a solar collection area, and the roof is solar collection. And the lighting. Hmm. We're in the north bedroom, and the north bedroom was the cold room in the house. So I thickened all the walls mm -hmm. with the same stuff as out there. They went from R9 mm -hmm. to R50. R9 is 2 by 4 with a uh, bat of insulation, which is standard construction. So I thickened what was that wall in that corner, and I built it up with polyiso OSB. And then another layer, uh -huh. and there's what it was before I put the wood on, uh -huh. which is the finished wood. Yeah, right. right. Beautiful room, by the way. Thank you. Okay. Coming down a hallway, there's no lights on, just two 14-inch sun tunnels at each end of the hallway. Now we're going to go to the master bedroom. In the master bedroom, I also thickened the wall. You see my little right. block collection on the ledge. Yeah. That wall is now R60, and then... You can see how thick the walls are by yeah. looking here. Yeah, and then the mini split up here is a super efficient mini split, has a sear value of 33. Wow. Cut. The standard is 13. Right. Yeah. Okay, now we're at this back addition. We've come down this side, and so this is the gymnasium room. Below it is the greenhouse, and above it is the solar food dehydrator. Okay. So, so here, here there's a long view. Yeah. So here there's an envelope that catches heat in the winter. The heat flows up, and it gets shipped to the north side of the house through, through that vent right there. Oh, okay. And it's thermostatically controlled. Right now in the summer, I am venting everything out. Right, of course. And so I have upper windows open and this open. It's all just bypassing because yeah, it's right. a 96 degree day. Right. But in the winter, this room really, this whole addition really helps to heat the house. Yes. Go. Okay. We're in this conference room. Used to be your back porch. Used to be the back porch. Yes. And... It has the solar clothes dryer and the airlock. So this is an airlock to the house. That's an airlock to this. Wow. And I'm revising this now, and I will be putting, replacing those windows with better windows just to get the energy efficiency to be where I want it. But uh, the windows here are, again, the four-ply Alpen. Mm-hmm. And then there's a two-ply and there's a four-ply shade that comes down. Okay. So I can get 
pen ply mm -hmm. of winter protection on that wall, and I'll have that wall up to that status. And you dry your laundry on these and clotheslines out This here. is my clothesline, and right now I have a few pens. We're now in the dining room, and this wall I have greatly upgraded. On the inside, I've added that amount of polyiso foam wow. and wood. On the outside, I did that amount, and then this is the wall structure, the same redwood. You can look in here, and you can see the old electrical outlet still works. In yeah, life. right. It, That's how much the wall has been increased. Yeah, right. For p people who are watching this video, they don't need to do this much. Now, this is my second, and this is another Sear 33, mm -hmm. and way, way, way below zero outside heater. Yeah, and it's on the same compressor, right? It's no, no, it's no, separate because. I get far more efficient if I have them be two separate, and I get the benefit of redundancy. If one oh, compressor true. fails, I still have a heating system, and neither one of these will do the whole house. Oh, okay, yeah. So I'm not tight. I like redundancy as a Bell Lab scientist. Oh, okay, yeah. The theory of redundancy is good. Okay. For cooking, when I don't have the sun ovens, I have an induction stove. And the induction stove is faster on and off than gas. Yeah. So it gives you all the responsiveness that people that love gas want. And it's it's off. It is off when it's off. Then for quality of air in the house, I have all these meters that are telling me that my radon is very low, my CO2 is very low, my particulates are very low, my VOCs are very low. I always know what I have for air quality. Mm -hmm. And so that's important. And then we're lit right now with a 22 inch sun tunnel. Yeah, right. No yeah. lights are on on this no floor lights. at all. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You notice these two 22 inch sun tunnels are lighting this whole space. And when right. you look at that wall, even the top pictures are being well lit because the diffusers are diffusing that widely. Right. Now, I took out the fireplace. Right. Because so. the fireplace heats when you don't want it to heat, and it cools when you don't want it to cool. It leaks right. like heck. Right. Here's what the sun tunnels look like on the roof. We're in the mechanical room now, and this is the heat pump water heater. I had had one 10 years ago, and it finally got to the end of its life, so this is a new one. They're amazingly efficient. I run it in heat pump only mode, and so my electricity use for water heat is nil. Right. This is the furnace that I put in, and I've cut off the gas line three years ago. Mm -hmm. so, so this is just this, sitting this here. This is just sitting here, and at some point, I'm gonna donate it, because it's a 95% efficient yeah. gas furnace. I'm in the lower level, in a closet off of the fifth bedroom, but this closet is acting as an adjunct mechanical room to have the energy recovery ventilator. Mm -hmm. This is made in Ohio. It costs, as an ERV, a quarter as much as a CERV, and it does things the CERV doesn't do, like recycling moisture, mm -hmm. not just heat. So it's more energy efficient, mm -hmm. and it keeps my CO2 levels and VOCs very, very low. And with all the wood in the house, it keeps the wood from drying out. Yeah, it, it, it works well. Now, I'll just point out, these are the entropy, entropy pads. They are the second level of ventilation, and you replace these, and you wash them, and they go back in. And these, the heat, when the air goes through, these are on a disc, mm -hmm. stays there in moisture, and then comes around, and the air comes through. So the heat and the moisture. Oh, I see. So it so, sucks moisture out of the outgoing air and puts it in the incoming yeah. air. And the moisture and heat. And the heat, yeah. Yeah, so uh, whereas a CERV just does the heat, doesn't get the moisture, and therefore it doesn't get the All the energy it could. in the moisture. Right, right. Very good. Thank right. you. So in addition to his outside fruit trees and garden, Steve has a greenhouse. Tell us about your greenhouse. Okay, I'll position us. Yep. We're right here at the back. That was the north in the entry. So we're at the south. We're going to come in 
okay. through this airlock, which I call a potting shed. Right. And then that's an airlock to get in here. And then here you see two big navel oranges. Yeah. All right. And down here a bunch of mandarins yeah. and coming around. Yeah. And then um, this is a Mexican guava that's new. And that's a pink variegated lemon. Um, there's banana trees getting the start. And this in bloom is a lime. Mm -hmm. And yeah. then this is a kumquat. And there's a few of last year's fruit still on it. But here you see this year's fruit. Mm -hmm. uh, this is thermal mass. Right. And so it's water. There's also the earth here is thermal mass. So when it gets too hot in here, actually, this is called a climate battery. And, and it takes the hot, hot air off the ceiling and it brings that down and then distributes it through three of those. And then on the other side, also, there's three underground and the earth becomes a heat sink, right. thermal mass. The south wall, I have doubled it and added light diversion. Mm -hmm. This is the triple wall and I put this on and the incident light coming down comes up so mm -hmm. that I'm not just going on to the floor. Mm -hmm. And so you see how bright yes. this is and compare that i didn't do that up right in this that one's area. darker up there yeah that triangle and so yeah that's interesting how you can see the difference yeah so this is giving me much better light one thing we didn't talk about was insulating your basement wall so i have five inches of poly iso i trenched down for four feet all the way around the house and i put this poly iso to add R35, R R25. No, R35, I'm sorry, R35 to the foundation walls below mm -hmm. grade for four foot. That's great. Yep, that's important too. Yeah. Oh yeah.